It's not uncommon when people come in for them to describe to us that they've been experiencing atypical behavior, acting in ways that aren't like themselves. And this is not so uncommon with post-traumatic stress disorder. And people with post-traumatic stress symptoms often attempt to take care of their problem on their own. People drink. Uh, they use substances, they misuse substances as a way of coping. Seven to eight percent of the general population each year are affected by post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. It manifests itself after an individual goes through a shocking, stressful, or for lack of a better term, a traumatic experience, leaving an individual in a very disturbed state. The disorder can affect people of all ages and is commonly seen in military veterans, victims of sexual assault or abuse, and even witnesses of terror attacks and natural disasters. Symptoms of PTSD can begin to overcome an individual three months after the traumatic event, and these include flashbacks, where you relive the event over and over while even feeling the physical symptoms, such as the racing heart and sweating. Individuals with PTSD can have difficulty falling asleep, difficulty concentrating, and can feel socially isolated, develop extreme anxiety while also having depression. Within the brain, the hippocampus, amygdala, and prefrontal cortex are the primary regions that are affected by PTSD, while the neurochemicals cortisol and norepinephrine, which are responsible for the stress response, also tend to show increased activity in PTSD patients. Imagine the worst possible day of your life. Now imagine reliving that moment over and over and over and over again. And with each passing moment, the fear that it may happen again only grows greater. For a lot of PTSD patients, they only see one solution, one effective way to cope with their problem. And this leads us to substance abuse. In recent years, PTSD has been shown to have a link with substance use disorder in which individuals frequently use these substances to cope with their struggles. But today we'll be only focusing our attention to one of these drugs, cannabis, or more commonly known as marijuana. So what is cannabis? Cannabis is a psychoactive drug that can be smoked, ate in an edible form, and drank in liquid form. The psychoactive substance within cannabis is known as THC, also known as tetrahydrocannabal. This is a molecule that is responsible for eliciting the euphoric effects that it is known for. CBD is another major component of cannabis, however, it is not relevant to the studies we will be examining. So, when cannabis is ingested, it causes the brain to release dopamine, which is the reward chemical for our body. And this is the fundamental mechanism by which cannabis affects our brain, body, and mental state. So now we've talked about PTSD, and we've talked about cannabis, but how do they relate to one another? We'll take a look at two studies that examine the effects of cannabis on PTSD. Does it help or does it hurt the symptoms? In a study conducted in 2014, researchers examined 2,276 military veterans who were diagnosed with PTSD. Their findings were astonishing. Following an analysis of their symptoms, they found that those military veterans that never used cannabis had the lowest level of PTSD symptoms, such as depression, anxiety, and sleeplessness. However, it is interesting that those who started smoking cannabis following PTSD diagnosis saw a rise in violent behaviors. In contrast, those who stopped smoking marijuana also saw a decrease in certain PTSD symptoms. In a more recent study conducted in 2020, 404 individuals with PTSD were put on a medical marijuana regimen in which they inhaled cannabis. These individuals tracked their symptoms on an app for 31 months and had a total of 11,000 responses. They tracked symptoms such as intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, irritability, anxiety, along with many others. After analyzing the results, the researchers concluded that there was a 50% decrease in all PTSD symptoms immediately after using marijuana. Like all studies, there are some limitations. There needs to be more controlled research so we can truly understand the effects. 
This is a new and advancing field, and it's necessary to explore all avenues to see how cannabis can improve or deteriorate our mental health. Now, where does this leave us? Can we say for certain that cannabis cures PTSD? Definitely not. But we can certainly also not rule it out as a potential treatment. What we can say though, is that for certain individuals, cannabis does prove to lessen the severity of their symptoms, while for others, it may increase them. Like any medication, before taking any course of action, it is best to consult your doctor and understand both the possible benefits and the risks. This is Demystifying Medicine presenting PTSD and Cannabis, Help or Hurt.